name it, wherever you are subscribed to, if you're looking for something specifically from that store, maybe you're looking for a sale that's going to come up. Maybe you're looking for a deal. If you've already gotten that thing that you're looking for, you can unsubscribe. Get that off your list. Get that off your email because that's just another thing you want to read. That's another thing, another notification that you probably don't want. Do you want to stay grounded, less triggered, less annoyed, and mindful throughout your wedding process? Well then, welcome. You've come to the right place. Hi lovelies, welcome back to our channel and I'm super excited to introduce to you a brand new series, The Little Book of Mindful Wedding Planning, ebook walkthrough. I have linked the ebook in the description below where you can grab your own copy. In this series, we'll explore and dive deep into each chapter. So if you're getting married or as close to someone who is getting married, or it's just altogether into mindfulness, then this series is for you. Join us every Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays as we journey through the little book of mindful wedding planning, chapter by chapter. Before we get on this week's chapter, don't forget to hit that subscribe button and ring the notification bell so you can never miss an episode. Together, we'll create moments of mindfulness amidst the demands of wedding planning. Hello lovelies, guess what? We are on chapter 9. Time to unsubscribe. Let me read on. If you already got a deal, booked some vendors that you love and narrowed down your ideas, cleared them off your binder. Already bought your wedding shoes? You can now unsubscribe to those wedding shoe deals email subscriptions. Getting these emails constantly will lead you to just reevaluate all your decisions. Another mental load you want to get rid of. Because really, you actually already finished it and already decided on them. This is again similar to everything that we already talked about. I'm trying to pull out every detail because sometimes the small details, we don't think about it too much, but it actually adds the load in our head. Like if you're looking for wedding shoe deals, if for example, you're subscribed to, I don't know, Nordstrom, Saks Fifth, David's Bridal, name it, wherever you are subscribed to, if you're looking for something specifically from that store, maybe you're looking for a sale that's going to come up. Maybe you're looking for a deal. If you've already gotten that thing that you're looking for, you can unsubscribe. Get that off your list. Get that off your email because that's just another thing you want to read. That's another thing, another notification that you probably don't want to get. Like, And the thing is, what happens is that if you already bought the shoe, best example, you already bought the shoe somewhere else. And then you got an email from a different store saying we got the same shoe for 50% off. Now what? Now what? There's another feeling that's going to come up. Oh man, I should have waited. And then you're going to doubt yourself. And then you think that you didn't make a good decision because now you spend more money. If you waited a little bit longer, you could have spent 50% less. Too much thinking. It is done, my friend. It is done. Get it out of the way. Get it out of the way. Okay, of course I would want a deal. Of course I would want to spend 50% less, 20% less, however percentage you got it cheaper for than what you've already bought. Of course, who like who doesn't want a deal? Even the richest of the rich wants a deal. But you know what? It's already done. You can't turn back time. There's just, just we can't control anything at this point. What we can control is that we have to stop telling ourselves that we made a bad decision quote unquote because you didn't make a bad decision you don't know you don't you don't know when that sale is going to come there's always going to be another sale coming there's always going to be something else that's going to come a coupon a deal a sale how do you know that you can't predict the future but at that point in time your checklist says order shoe and at that point you saw a good deal or maybe if you even wanted full price doesn't matter and i say it, it doesn't matter not in a monetary sense where i'm just like yeah spend all your money and like don't think about it when you're spending when i say be mindful of your budget and now you're telling us to just spend the money full price 
Yeah, no, but if it's gonna cost you peace, if it's gonna cost you worry, if it's gonna cost you sitting on that task for another two months, I, I'm pretty sure it deserves the full price. You're gonna know how you are too. Like, be aware of what something brings you. If I look at a task and it's undone for so long, I have to say, okay, is this thing giving me stress sitting there? Sometimes it really doesn't because I feel like it's not really important to me. But if the shoe is really important to you and you really want to get it and having it, physically seeing it in your house, in your room, in your wedding corner, seeing it there gives you so much joy and gives you energy and like makes you feel like you've got your shit together. That was worth the money. There are so many intangible feelings that sometimes a purchase gives you that the financial gurus tell you to save your money, save your money. Don't spend it on this. Don't spend it on that. That makes sense. Of course, be mindful. We're not spending money on everything, just not thinking. But this goes back to earlier when we have to be mindful of the budget, right? If I spent this budget on this, if say it's a $500 shoe, example, this is a $500 shoe. Can I get this for 400? Most likely. But you cannot, unless this is like a real fluke, right? Understand what you're getting. Can you get a $500 shoe for 250? That's the 50% off. Yeah. Can you get it for lesser than that? Sure. But what are the odds of you finding that before your wedding? Now you're just literally anticipating, praying, waiting there. And this energy is just looming all over you. Be like, oh my God. I'm stressed. I can't find my shoe. I really want to spend 500 on it. But to you, it's important. So why don't we spend 500 on this and see where I can save somewhere else? Because that's important to you. You know, be fair to yourself. You want that. You want to sail on that shoe. You want to wait. You subscribe to so many shoe stores, to department stores, to online stores. You're waiting for that shoe to go on sale or at least to have a deal, have a coupon, have whatever you're following influencers, whatever, whoever, whatever you're following. Give yourself a time frame for that. Okay. For maybe a month or two, depending on how far your wedding is. If your wedding is eight months from now, give yourself maybe, be fair to yourself. Give yourself maybe two months. Okay. For two months, I'm going to sit here and wait for a deal. I've subscribed to so many stores and I'm just going to wait here. For a deal because as much as i love the shoe for 500 dollars, maybe i can find it for 400 maybe 450 even or maybe free shipping however that looks like for you give yourself two months okay every day probably not every day usually it's about once twice a week where vendors websites influencers sends you emails i mean from our end we always send once a week because we don't want to overwhelm people but once or twice a week is usually the generic frequency in where you get these emails. So let's say four weeks in a month. So you have eight emails for two months. If in those eight emails per store, per influencer, per person, per website, whatever the case may be for you, you're getting eight emails from one source. Can you imagine if you subscribe to 10? Now you have like 80 emails that you're going to review. After that two months, if you still haven't found the deal that you're waiting for, I think you're going to do yourself a favor and be just like, you know what? I'm just going to have to book it. This page has to be turned. Because lo and behold, six months into the wedding, you probably still haven't found it. And you know what? You're probably just going to end up buying it full price anyways. What's worse is that when you're ready to buy it full price, maybe they don't have it in stock. Now you're probably going to be back looking around and waiting for it to be back in stock. Because you know, when something is out of stock, you subscribe and then they will let you know when it's back in stock. Now you're back in the circle. Basically for the first two months, three months, four months, five months, six months, you're waiting on this deal to save a hundred dollars off your shoe. Is that hundred dollars for six months over that course of six months? Carrying that mental load, carrying that emotional turbulence of like, where is it? Oh, did I get this? Oh, maybe they have it on sale. Oh, who has the coupon code? Oh, this. You're going to have to be aware of the things that you can purchase, but will give you peace. 
again, this is part of the mindful budgeting. Doesn't mean you have to do that every single thing. Of course, maybe you want to order favors and you want it on sale. Yeah, sure. You can, you have a lot of options for that. Is it, is that important to you to have a specific wedding favor? If not, then maybe that you can wait on. You can still subscribe and wait on until you find a good deal and you decide that this is it and you're good to go. But if the way your wedding shoes, but if your wedding shoes is really, really important to you, you're going to have that on hand. When you have something that's important to you in your hand, really right in front of you, you can see it physically tangible. A lot of other things are just easier because I'm like, you know what? I'm not worried. I already got everything that I wanted. Like the things that truly matter to me is here. The menu, whatever, I, I, I can wait. I can wait for a sale for that. If I get a subscription, I can wait for that. Like if I get an email that something is on sale, I can look at it. Either I want it or I don't, but I'm not pressured. I don't have that pressure. I don't have that big loss. You know, when you have something and something gets broken. Not everything that you have, when it breaks, you feel the same about it. You catch my drift? I would break something and I'm just like, well, it's broken. I got to get rid of it. And then something so important to me breaks and I'm just like so upset. Like it's such a different attachment. Like this thing have served me so good. Maybe it's time to go, but it really is a different attachment. It's the same with the things about your wedding. When you know what's truly important to you, you give that attention and you give your budget to that. You, you, you're you mindful of what it is that really matters to you and brings you joy and that's what you spend on that's where the money should go again i feel like i have to keep saying this it doesn't mean that you're gonna sacrifice every single thing around you and be disrespectful and just not care about your guests that's not the point the point is if you are surrounded by people that understands what you really want even if your partner, like your partner knows that you're dreaming about these shoes for so long. But you, you know what, for all my life, I don't want to spend a shoe, for example. I mean, I would, I'd love to invest in myself. But if, for example, I don't want to spend a $500 shoe ever in my entire life. But you know what, for the wedding, this is really my dream. Will you really question yourself for that? No, it's your wedding. And people say, oh, you know, it's a wedding. It just happens once. Exactly my point. Sure, sometimes it happens again and again. But at this point in time, I have worked hard too. And if I want a really good shoe, I, I'm pretty sure that I deserve that. Now step back and look at your budget, right? Like if your overall budget is just say, for example, hypothetical 50 grand. Hypothetical. You're spending something that matters to you so much in this element. You're still going to fit your 50 grand budget because you're going to move things around and other things now won't matter. And other things now probably you can wait for a really good sale because you're okay with being flexible with all the other things. But the ones that you truly, truly want to spend money on from the budget that you set anyways, like you're still within the budget, okay, inside the bigger budget you're just moving things around and you're prioritizing things and spending money on things that really truly brings you joy know which part of the wedding email subscription you have that you want to unsubscribe and this is a, i'm going to tell you a true story we had one subscriber who she said you know what i really love everything that you've sent but i've already finished most of my wedding planning and my wedding is in three months i really don't need to be here and i just wanted to let you know that and thank you that throughout the planning, you've helped me. And that I think was the birth of this chapter where I'm like, wow, she really knows. I like respect whoever you know, you know who you are. And the fact that she took her time to email us and unsubscribe to let us know why she's unsubscribing, it's very rare. But because some of them we really had a great conversation with, when they have a question, we really answer it. We, we share resources as much as we can. So when she emailed that, I'm just like, wow, she really is on top of her game. She is unsubscribing. I mean, I can only imagine that she also subscribed to other wedding blogs. She also subscribed to other wedding influencers, to other wedding ideas, wedding shoes, wedding gowns, wedding bridesmaids outfit, wedding accessories, probably subscribed to a lot of things. And at that point, she probably sat down and be just like, listen, I am done 
with most of these things, it's time for me to unsubscribe. And as a wedding website, I respect that. And that's exactly what I'm saying. We know when to unsubscribe because I might come up with an idea. Our team might come up with an article that might actually cause you confusion because you've already done a lot of things. Why would you read about that when you've already done it? Like, like if you buy a house, right after you buy a house, you don't go back to the market and look at other houses and make yourself feel bad or overthink your decision of buying that house. No, it's, it's time. That's done. I move on to the next part of my life. And that's exactly what we're saying here. Know when to unsubscribe. Once you check something off your list, you unsubscribe. This is similar to the declutter your Pinterest board. Once you're done, there's no reason for you to keep all these things as much as they're great because they're reminders of how far you've come. They have to be filed away. You have to give space for more creativity, for more peace, for more relaxation, just an open space altogether. Open up your heart, open up your inbox. You don't need to have that notification again and again about things you've already decided on. So be kind to yourself and subscribe. Honestly, side note before I leave, even for this channel, if at one point I understand that once you got married already, you don't need to get notifications from me. You don't need to get notifications from our website, like what I said, like the story I said earlier. That's fine. Please unsubscribe if this is no longer serving you. There's a cycle. Like there's someone else getting married. You're done there now. You're probably going to go to a different stage in your life. Amazing. It's great meeting you. I love you. All the love goes to you. All the good vibes, baby. Great. I respect you for that. So unsubscribe from things that no longer serve you. Unsubscribe from things that you've already decided on. Give yourself the space to relax, to have peace, to find more joy and enjoy your whole wedding planning process better. And that's a wrap for today's episode of the little book of mindful wedding planning series. Your comments, questions and support mean the world to us. And I can't wait to hear from you in the comments section below. If you haven't already, make sure to subscribe to our channel and hit that notification bell so you can never miss an episode. If you found today's episode valuable, please give it a thumbs up so it can reach more people. Thank you so much, lovely. See you on the next episode. Bye.